Once again, I'm thankful to be before you on this Lord's Day. I would like to point out I'm thankful for that class we just had on singing. I, for one, you know, it's said that you, some folks can't carry a tune in a bucket. I don't even have a bucket. As, as Christians, when we begin our walk, we start out as babes. God never intended, us, intended on us to stay that way. We, we think of that as our normal daily walk, but that applies to worship too. Bible study in every aspect of our lives. God expects us to grow. During World War II, there was a Belgian regiment called the 10th Regiment of the Line. Now that regiment was renamed twice through the years. Um, I don't know how to pronounce that name properly, so I will not attempt to. So I just called them by their first name, but they were renamed twice through the years. Well, there was a Belgian unit that was ordered to hold the line on the border between Belgium and to defend it against the advancing German Panzers. On May 10th, 1940, this regiment was able to fend off Germany's 1st Panzer Division. And this, this was part of the Battle of Bodange. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly. But they were able to do this for about a day, eight hours to a day. There seems to be some confusion on the history of that. Ultimately, they were captured, they were defeated. But during their fighting, they were able to successfully trick the Axis advances into believing that they were much more than 40 rifles strong. When they were captured and interrogated, they asked these men, where are the others? And according to the history, they laughed and said, there are no others. We are all. Their motto for this particular regiment was resiste et mords, which in English is resist and bite. You see, this regiment received their orders to defend the border at all costs, but later were given other orders to retreat in full. But due to poor communication, they never received that second order, so they honored their first orders. And they defended that border to the best of their ability. However, they were indeed captured. But they stalled this Germany's first panzer division long enough to help the rest of the army there in Belgium. Now in thinking about this this particular event in history, you have such a small force holding off such a large force. It calls to my mind the forces of Gideon in Judges chapter 7. Where Gideon, the judge of Israel, keeping in mind that what the judge was, he was a military leader designed by God to bring the children of Israel back to him. And you'd have a period where the people were faithful to God, they would repent of their wickedness, and through process of time, they would forget about God again, and this cycle would continue until God would raise up another judge. But in starting out, Gideon had 32,000 soldiers, 32,000 men that were willing to serve their country, to serve God in defeating evil. Eventually, this number dwindled down to 300. God so chose to dwindle this number, we find in Judges chapter 7, verse 2. It says, And the Lord said unto Gideon, The people that are with thee are too many for me to give the Midianites into their hands, lest Israel vaunt themselves against me, saying, Mine own hand hath saved me. Now, there's no doubt that these... 29,700 soldiers were good soldiers but they were sent home to prove Israel a point eventually we have 300 
Now in verse 12 of that same chapter, it says, And the Midianites and the Amalekites and all the children of the east lay along in the valley like grasshoppers for multitude, and their camels were without number, as the sand by the seaside for multitude. So we're dealing with a, a huge amount of, of troops that these 300 are going to array themselves in battle against. Now, as we referenced earlier, this 10th Regiment of Belgium, they followed the orders that they were given. History remembers them accordingly. It is evidently a very difficult history piece to find because of the nature of it. But they were successful in following their orders. You look at Gideon and his 300 men. They obeyed God and were victorious. Now, if they had all died, they'd still be victorious because they obeyed God to the best of, a, of their ability. Now, I would encourage you to read the rest of this account. It's not like really any other battle you would think of. They didn't actually fight. They came in and they scared this band of troops, and they all killed themselves out of the mass confusion. God won the day, and Israel with him. We ourselves today will be victorious if we obey God, keep his commandments, remain faithful to him. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 7 through 10, we're told there, But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body of the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of, also of, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. For we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. And then dropping down to verse 16. For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. You see, this 10th Regiment, they follow their orders to protect their country. Gideon and his 300, they obeyed God to be faithful to Him to defend their country. We, as citizens of the kingdom, must obey God to defend our country, and that is the kingdom of God. Error is always attempting to make itself known and try to weasel its way into the church. Will we be able to stand fast and to protect the church from such error? Will we be able to keep ourselves unspotted from the world? God expects us to be able to do that. Now, one, one cannot remain faithful if, unless they first become faithful. Well, if you're not a Christian, why have you not obeyed the gospel? Why not do so today? Now, if you are faithful, continue being faithful. As the motto of this 10th Regiment, resist and bite. You know, there's going to be troubles we face. You look at the first century brethren, they deal with quite a bit. We have the luxury of not having to worry about being fed to lions today. They had to worry about that. But they were still faithful to God in, in spite of that. We must show the same amount of courage. We must be faithful unto death, Revelation chapter 2, verse 10. Now, if you are a child of God but have allowed sin back into your life, you've stumbled, please take the next few moments to have that sin removed through repentance and prayer. So whatever the need might be, make it known as together we stand and sing.